Hi, Officer Dylan here. Today I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to talk to you about the correct handling of bycatch. But before I do, it is important to know what bycatch actually is. AFMA defines bycatch as species that physically interact with fishing vessels or fishing gear and are not usually kept by commercial fishers. In November 2016, AFMA introduced the handling and treatment of bycatch condition, which states that the concession holder or person acting on the holder's behalf must not mistreat bycatch. Since implementing this condition, the number of instances we've seen of bycatch being mishandled has decreased. This is a positive result, but more work needs to be done. Fishers are responsible for handling bycatch species appropriately to maximise their chance of survival. Mishandling bycatch species can significantly reduce the chances of survival and have long-term impacts on the sustainability of the species. To help you minimise the risk of breaching your conditions, AFMA has developed six bycatch handling and treatment principles for you to follow. These are Principle 1. Safety of the boat and its crew are paramount. Mishandling does not include actions taken or not taken, which are reasonably necessary to ensure the safety of the boat and its crew. Principle two, all reasonable steps should be taken. Operators are expected to take all reasonable steps to ensure that bycatch is returned to the water as quickly as practicable and in a manner which does not reduce its chance of survival. Principle three, minor gear recovery is not reasonably necessary. Actions taken for the sole purpose of recovering minor fishing gear are not considered reasonably necessary. Principle four, expediting removal from gear is not reasonably necessary. It is not reasonably necessary to injure bycatch when removing it from fishing gear to save time. Principle five, harm, injury or death caused during capture is not mishandling. Mishandling does not include where bycatch is already dead injured or stressed when it is brought on board. Principle six, compliance with approved bycatch management plans. Handling of bycatch in accordance with AFMA approved bycatch management plans is not considered mishandling. For more information on these principles and suggested practices for the treatment and handling of bycatch, please see AFMA's website and refer to AFMA's bycatch handling and treatment guide. Clayton will now fill you in on some practical examples of good bycatch handling. Thanks Dylan. AFMA has found some great examples of operators out in the water who are following the requirements when it comes to bycatch. Let's take a look at a few examples. But first, as an AFMA compliance officer, I understand that at times returning bycatch to the water can be unsafe for crew, such as when they are close to moving machinery or gear under load. We do not expect you to put your own safety at risk and as our first bycatch handling and treatment principle states, the safety of the boat and its crew are paramount. In the first example, the crew are safely returning bycatch to the water as soon as they come on deck. This reduces the stress put on the animal and can greatly increase their chance of survival. If it is safe to do so, bycatch should be returned to the water immediately and not left on deck for extended periods of time. Or better yet, if possible, release them while they are still in the water like you can see in this clip. If an animal is deeply hooked or badly tangled, it is best practice to cut as much of the gear from the animal as possible, rather than harm the animal to retrieve any minor fishing gear, such as hooks. As you can see in these clips, the gear is cut from the animal while it is still in the water. This helps reduce the stress on the animal and the risk of potential injury to crew on board. Once the gear is removed from the animal, return it to the water or let it swim away. Now Dylan is going to take you through some of the ways you can minimise harm to bycatch. You can ensure you are meeting your permit conditions by not harming the animal before you return it to the water. Examples of harm to bycatch include gaffing, stabbing, kicking, hitting or throwing the animal. It also means you should not remove the tail or barb of rays. Often this can be more dangerous to the crew than releasing the animal unharmed. Live bycatch should not be allowed to be rolled onto the net drum. All animals should be removed from the gear before it enters the drum and returned to the water. Similarly, dogfish should not interact or pass through the dehooking device during auto longline operations. In this example, 
the dogfish are being cut from the line without being brought on board the vessel. If you would like any further information on the correct handling of bycatch species, please see AFMA's Shark and Ray Handling Practices Guide and the new Bycatch Handling Practices Guide. Both contain information on correct handling techniques for many common bycatch species caught in Australia's Commonwealth fisheries. This information is available on the AFMA website. Your actions affect the marine environment you rely on to make a living. By adopting best practice bycatch handling techniques, you can help to promote sustainable fisheries where safe interactions can occur.